Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him. We say ought to be praised and glorified. <coughs> and we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as we greet you on this the 24th day of the month of Jumadi al-Ula uh, from my sitting room here in the Caribbean island of Trinidad with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat and we thank Allah that one month ago I was just a whisper away from leaving this world with a massive heart attack and one month later we thank Allah that I'm still here with you. He sent me back. And one of the reasons why I'm back here is to teach. To teach the Book of Allah. Now then, I want to give three brief talks on Gaza. Uh, before I had the heart attack, the fireworks had already started in Gaza. And uh, now, one month later, it's still burning. The smallest are still there in Gaza. Uh, but during this one month, we've witnessed that the world is changing. That the response of mankind around the world today to the genocide in Gaza is quite different from what it was five years, ten years ago. And public opinion around the world is changing. And those who have been oppressors, oppressing mankind for a few hundred years now, are now being exposed to mankind. But that's not our topic. Our topic is, uh, this is entitled Gaza One. In Gaza 1, we say that let us turn to the Quran and ponder over the declaration that Allah has made in the Quran. In Surah Al Nahl of the Quran. And this is what he says And I am speaking most of all to the scholars of Islam. I'm speaking most of all to my critics who consider them to be learned people in Islam. I'm talking to you most of all. This is what Allah says in the Quran. That we have sent down this book on thee, O Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, that this book might be tibiyanan li kulli shay. That this book might explain all things. Are you listening? Don't run away. Stay, listen. This is what Allah says. This, this book will explain all things. Well then, if this book explains all things, well then surely this book would have an explanation for one of the most mysterious, one of the most extraordinary events ever to occur in human history. What is it? That when one part of the Israelite people rejected Nabi Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, the son of the Virgin Maryam, they rejected him as the Messiah. They said, no, you can't be the Messiah. You a bastard when I was a beloved man, Shaitan. And uh, 
<coughs> when they saw him, now listen carefully. Listen carefully what I'm saying. So don't make a fool of yourself. When they saw him crucified on the cross before their very eyes, that's what they saw. And if I was there, I would see the same thing. And if you were there, you would see the same thing. So listen carefully to my words. When they saw him crucified before their very eyes, because that's what Allah wanted them to see. Then they started to celebrate. It's another subject that the world had to wait 600 years for us to know what happened on that day. That no, they did not crucify him. No, they did not kill him. Allah made it appear that way. But that's what they saw. And then when they celebrated, that's what's in the Quran. Don't accuse me of being anti-Semitic. Stop your rubbish. This is not anti-Semitism. This is the Quran. If you want to say that the Quran is anti-Semitic, go ahead and say it if you have courage. Go ahead and say it. The Quran says that you celebrated. That's what the Quran says. You celebrated when you saw him crucified. And then Allah expelled you from the Holy Land, threw you out of the Holy Land. Yes, he gave the Holy Land to you, but he gave it to you conditionally. And the condition was faith in Allah and righteous conduct. And every time you violated that condition, he threw you out of the Holy Land. Do you dispute that? And then for 2,000 years, they were banned. They could not return to reclaim Jerusalem as their own. 2,000 years! And then after 2,000 years, mysteriously, they are brought back to the Holy Land. And you expect me to eat my biryani or couscous and go home and sleep like you? You expect me to be a fool? No, if the Quran says it explains all things, then the Quran must explain to me, how is it? Then after 2,000 years, the Jews have come back to Jerusalem to reclaim it as their own. After 2,000 years, a state of Israel is restored in, the, in Jerusalem. After 2,000 years, that state of Israel now wants the world to believe that this is the holy Israel of Solomon and David. Allah's blessing will be upon him. Could this be by accident? I'm asking you who eat your biryani and go home and sleep like sheep and cattle and goats. Or is there an explanation in the Quran for what is now happening in Gaza? Does the Quran explain to us this phenomenon of after 2,000 years of banning, banned from returning, the Jews have now returned to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own? If you cannot answer that question, go back to school. Don't criticize me. Go back to school. Tell us what is the explanation in the Quran. We have given the explanation, but every single one of you declare Imran is wrong, Imran is wrong, Imran is wrong, because you're following tafsir and you're abandoning the Quran. What will you do on Judgment Day when you learn to your horror? 
that you have betrayed the truth in the Quran and that I have explained the Quran correctly that the Quran does explain the return of the Jews to the Holy Land the Quran does tell us the answer how does this happen it is there in Surah to the Mia when Allah speaks about a town and that he destroyed the town and he expelled the people of the town and he placed a ban on them they could never return to that town to reclaim it as their own وَحَرَامٌ عَلَى قَرِيَةٍ أَهْلَكْنَاهَا أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَرْجِعُونَ حَتَّى they can never return to reclaim that town as their own until when? Hatta Iza Futihat Yajuju Majuj Wahum min kulli hadabin yansilun Until an event occurs only once in history you and I will recognize it was not these idiots who eat the biryani and go home and sleep. These idiots. My language is harsh because I was a whisper away from death. Allah sent me back so that now my voice will be like thunder to them. That it is when Gog and Magog are released. And they spread out all over the world. And once and only once in human history this happens. They will take control of power in the world. And Gog and Magad will return and bring these people back to that town from which they were expelled. Which town is it? This is not Ta'wil, this is not interpretation at all. We simply have to look for a town which is linked with Gog and Magog. And Prophet Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, he did that for you while you're eating your biryani and going home and sleep like sheep and cattle and goats and camels. He said that Gog and Magog will be destroyed by Allah in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. What more do you want? Slaves! of tafsir but you abandon the Quran and so yes my voice is like thunder because I've been sent back to the world now to give you thunder it's time to wake up and recognize that you betrayed the Quran in your wrong views and your wrong explanation on the subject of Gog and Magog and if I am right and you are wrong you pay the price for it. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.